Vayner Nation, what's good? I'm pretty excited about this podcast. Um, as many of you know who listen, I'm obsessed with the concept of what the utility is in an NFT. Uh, I'm obsessed with good entrepreneurship, people that are patient and build the right way. I'm obsessed with, I'm obsessed with Andy Kay not making noise in the background. <laughs> but I do love that you're sitting on the floor, my man from the dirt. Um, we're here with one of my favorite entrepreneurs. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. And, and why I say my favorite, we've had some opportunities to chop up in Miami and other places, but I like really watching from afar and I really do admire true operations. You know, there's people with ideas that are creative, there's, there's all sorts of versions. Um, I'm such an operator and I've been my whole life. I know that most people don't see me that way because I put out a lot of sizzle into the world with the way I communicate, but for me it's always been about the stake. It's why I'm always confident. It's why I always win. <laughs> it's why VFriends will win. It's why Vayner wins. It's why Wine Library wins. It's why everything wins. If you can really operate, truly, the HR stuff, the balancing your checkbook, like real shit, like actually running a business. And it's also why I give so much love to like small businesses, like the people in my messages and DMs that they're like, yo, I'm no big deal, but like people, you know, people, I, I hate this. I always have to reply like, you are a big deal. Yo, I'm no big deal, but like I got two bakeries in Detroit and it's going well, I'm doing two million. I'm, every time I'm like, do you understand how hard it is to run two fucking bakeries in Detroit that does two million dollars in revenue? You're a fucking champion. Stop reading the fucking occasional headlines of like the crazy money made by the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Now this dude is building a real fucking business. He's not necessarily a bakery in Detroit, but a bakery in Detroit could be the name of a song that's played at one of his concerts. Uh, T, why don't you introduce yourself fully uh, and then we'll go into the building of Rolling Loud, which is one of the most culturally relevant uh, events in the world. And then we'll go into kind of a, a, a quick like punchline of this utility that I'm very excited you're letting me kind of break it out there a little, give a little awareness to it. Yeah, I'm excited to tell people about it, but my name is Tarek Sharif, as you know, but what's up, Gary V Universe, <laughs> and uh, I'm the co-founder, co-CEO of Rolling Loud, uh, Rolling Loud Festival, and media, and merch, and all that. It's uh, It's been a journey, you know, we started Rolling Loud in 2015, but prior to that, we had what I call our college tuition of throwing regular concerts from 2010 to 2015, just building up our, cutting our teeth from 100 person shows, 500, 700, 1,000. What was 2000. the first show? Rick Ross After Party, Chubby's Nightclub, Tallahassee, <laughs> Florida. Um, he was performing at FAMU Homecoming with DJ Khaled and Waka Flocka and a couple other people. And I was hit, his, his sis, or he tweeted for, for after party bookings, email ricky rose bookings at gmail so that i was like oh this is it this is it first of all like i didn't want to do after parties i wanted to do concerts but then right. i saw that opportunity grabbed it long story short we're not after party promoters we're concert promoters yep. we learned that that night <laughs> <laughs> we I took a that, fat l <laughs> i love that you <laughs> i love the humility tell, yeah. tell them tell the kids at home like they, they see rolling loud now they don't know that your first event was a big fucking fat oh, dog shit L. Yeah, 2,000 person nightclub, maybe 200 people there, and I'm being generous when I say 200, like AK maybe 100. 67. Like, yeah, yeah, 67 sounds <laughs> about right. You know, uh, not Rick Ross's fault, just the promoter for the after party booked the only other nightclub in the college town of Tallahassee, Florida, and just out-promoted us. Yeah. And they had the leverage of having the bigger event uh -huh. to funnel people from. Was, but, was Rose mad at you guys? Nah, he was the coolest guy ever. He had a contractual obligation to perform zero songs and he performed like nine. So wow. it was awesome. Good for him. We had a great day I together. I the shit out of that kind of stuff. Nah, he loved to him forever. Of course. Um, but yeah, because that could have been a real sour taste. It was sour, you know. It was sour in one way, but loss, on top of that, if the star comes in and shits oh, on you right, for an hour right, and a half, right, right. that just compounds the fuck out of it. Nah, he was super cool about it. Like he, he was awesome. Um, but we learned that night, yo, we're not after party promoters. Let's go back to <laughs> You retired real quick from that? Yeah. <laughs> it's just we wanted to throw concerts. You know, at the time nobody was doing hip hop concerts for the type of rappers we were listening to at the time, which was like Currency, Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, what year Big is this? Sean, two thousand ten. So like Hip Hop at Lunch Days. Big shout out my boy. Yeah. So we just went back to that plan by February two thousand eleven. That's pre SoundCloud, right? Yeah. That's like right, because I'm thinking you do you know do you know that do you even know, Boyd, that like I was one of the first 10 people to download SoundCloud. Alex came up to me at Lay Web. 
2011 or 12, the same weekend in Paris when Garrett Camp in a hotel room with a couple bottles of bourbon pitched the idea of Uber. Wow. I was in the fucking room. Wow. Travis was in the room. Garrett, was, Garrett literally in the room. Hey guys, I've been thinking about something with the iPhone. Imagine if you could get a limo Dude. from your iPhone. Amazing. So I always think about that. That happened that weekend in Paris. I downloaded SoundCloud and like, anyway, nonetheless, pre-SoundCloud, that crew, the stuff Boyd was fucking with, stuff yeah. that was popping, even my, that was yeah. tailing my space. No, yeah, like, yeah, like Currency and Wiz yeah. met on my space. Yeah. You know, and yep. the whole how how fly that whole era was the built OG off social MySpace. My yep. space. Yep. So, so you want we do saw that. that on the internet, yeah. and I knew that if we booked those rappers, you knew because you saw the fucking wall. Yeah, you saw the top eight. Yeah, all that. <laughs> I didn't even have a MySpace, but I knew how to navigate it. Yeah, and I, and YouTube was popping. Like I just was watching what was happening on the internet. Facebook ad. You always preach about Facebook ads, like for the past years. I know now it's the ROI is different. Yes, I still use them though. But Facebook I ads I was, are back to being a fairly good deal because iOS 14.5 fucked up all the retargeting DTC brands and a lot of the money's out of the system and yep. a lot of other people don't realize how much is going on there. Facebook Reels, for me, is on fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm the Facebook Reels champion. So we Killing were like, the 67-year-olds in Iowa. In Florida, we were some of the first people doing Facebook ads, especially for events, but we were... I, we got a lot like, of value there. Of like, I was reaching the, the whole state of <laughs> for Wiz Khalifa fans for cheap, like yeah, super it was cheap. Working. Yeah, so just that's went, how you built. Yeah, we did that for years, and then we started seeing like you know, there's a different subgenres of rap. Yes, so you start seeing the same fans at the shows catering to the di different subgenres. So you got the lyrical fans, you got the turned up fans, you got the melodic fans, and then as you said about SoundCloud, SoundCloud starts popping up all these Florida artists are like carrying the torch for SoundCloud. We're a Florida company. Mm. So as X and Ski, or, and X is XXX, yes. mm -hmm. Ski Master Slump God, Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, Rob Banks, that Raider Clan, all that stuff was with, uh, we grew together. Yes. So we're seeing all these same fans and we're see, like, coming up with these artists. We're like, we need to build some one event that all these. What was the first event that you kind of like when you two, actually give give some love to your partner. Matt Zingler, that's my partner. Him and I have been, we've been friends since fourth grade. I know, um, it's amazing. And we used to throw, him, him, myself, and a couple of our other high school friends, we used to throw parties at my grandma's house. I kind of feel bad for those other friends who are like, fuck man, we should have been in the mix. Nah, those are still my boys. Like, they're, they're crushing it in there. Yeah, yeah I'm like, sure, I'm one sure of them's are. like a real estate sure. tycoon. Like, they're, they're doing their thing. I'm sure. But, um, what we was, used to throw what was parties. the event that you met, like, when you were like that, like, when it was over? Two, three, four a.m. or Sunday afternoon. I don't know the details, but like when you really had a second to take a beat and you kind of looked at each other and said, "Oh, we got something." Honestly, it wasn't until the third year of Rolling Loud. Okay. Like, or maybe the second year. The second year is like I think we got something. But the then, first year did what? First year was sixty-five hundred people, which is already a real number. Yeah, one day, one one you know one yep. ticket one day, yep. sixty-five hundred people, twenty fifteen, and you were pumped. Yeah, lost a hundred grand, yep. but like pumped. Like, hey, never happier to lose a hundo because you kind of felt like we could build like, on this. Yeah, we. I yeah. was like, I knew we could build on year two. It. Um, year two scaled up to two days, fifteen thousand people per day, mm. and we made back the hundred grand we lost plus a little bit more. Mm. So I was like, okay, I think we got something. Right, you and you felt that year yeah. three was going to be when it happened, and then. Year three, we moved to Bayfront Park, which is where mm. they do Ultra Music Festival uh -huh. in Miami. And we scaled up to 40,000 people per day for three days. So 120,000 over the weekend. Um, and it, the city tried to shut us down. <laughs> like we had to have a vote and we threatened to sue the city for 30 million and all this stuff. <laughs> it's a, a city owned park. And long story short, they let us do the event and we sold it out 40,000 a day. And the whole, that was when the whole industry was like, whoa, what There's is rolling big. loud? And yeah. at the same time, like I said, XXX Tentacion, look at me, yeah. is going crazy. Like all the music. I remember. Was, yeah, I all, remember. Everything was happening at once and people started being like, damn, what is rolling loud? Like how they how they strike like, And what this was click, happening? But it was were you guys just you were building community on the web? It was just happening? You were well, just we grinding were, it? Like, we were doing happening? shows every month for five years, winning, losing, and breaking even with every rapper and every sub So you had the relationships the of the guys that now Yeah, like we take you there. from 200 cap venue on your first tour, your next tour bringing you to 500, your next tour bringing you to 1,000. And then it was like, hey, the next play is these festivals we got. 
So it yeah, was it just a, a lot of groundwork. You had the and, minor leagues. Yeah. And then you had, you're right. Yeah, it's exactly. almost like wrestling. You did the little shows yeah. in like Arkansas mm-hmm. and then you had your WrestleMania each mm-hmm. year. Yeah. So that, that's basically what it was. And uh, with, especially with the online, yeah, we were always for, cognizant for, of building community online. Yeah. I noticed as well. that's how I, so real quick, cause I know we don't have unlimited time and that's on me. I apologize. Got caught up in my kid's school. Um, for the people at home, which there's gonna be, a, I have such a all over the fucking place community. For the people at home, Rolling Loud today, as an events business, obviously throughout the merch, and it's a no question a lifestyle brand, but at its core, no different than VaynerX has a lot of companies, but Vayner Media mm-hmm. sits at the middle. Rolling Loud as an events business, just explain to everybody the size and scale that you've now gotten to. So our Miami show does eighty five thousand people per day. Um, we are all over the world once now. a year. Once, so we're once anywhere we go, we're once a year. Yep. So, so we you, do Miami you, in L- 2022. You did Miami, Portugal, Netherlands, New York, and we would usually do LA, LA. but we've shifted LA from December to March now. Got it. So, so got it. It's not happening this year. It's happening yep. in March. Why'd you do um, that? If you can, we share. were able to move to SoFi Stadium slash Hollywood Park. That is this beautiful just, new venue, yeah, and like, obviously December when it. you have two NFL teams, as you know a lot yeah, about the NFL, they got you know the Chargers. I'm and still the turned Rams. up from the Jets stunner on Sunday. <laughs> Everything I had he like goes, thir- receipts, motherfucker. I was. By the way, the funniest thing is I'm so deep in Jets culture. When I did that. All day Monday, which is a couple days ago when we're filming this, everyone's like, what the fuck did that mean? I forgot that nobody really follows the Jets like that. (laughs) And our head coach was saying earlier in the week that he's keeping receipts of everyone who says we suck. And so that's what that was. But everybody basically, like all my friends, I I got hit up more about that piece of content than anything because a lot of people just think I lost my mind. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so all those cities, like it's it's a real business Yeah, it's like every festival's got at least... Well, some of them got to go as low as like. And what do you 30, think for twenty three? You got March in L A. You adding so we'll anything? So March in L A. Because now we're kind we'll, of getting closer to a post COVID world. You're probably feeling a little bit better because twenty two. You still had to take some risks. Yeah, even tw- we were the first festival back in twenty one. By the way, hmm. um, which was a massive risk, but we took it and it worked. You know, nobody died of COVID, so Thank God. nobody died at all, which is which, which is which. shocking. <laughs> 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 I watched no. the videos. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, but it it's been it's been just incredible the support but so 2023 we got my uh la in march then we're going to europe in end of june beginning of july we've got Netherlands. i like i like how you're doing oh that wait because, hold up we got please. thailand in april thailand skip thailand yeah it's our first year in asia so uh we've done like a small show in asia but this is our first festival in festival asia we're gonna be awesome. bringing american artists booking asian artists as well thai artists um so then after april we go to end of june top of july we got europe portugal netherlands and we're going to be adding one market that we haven't announced yet and then we go to miami then we go to toronto then we go to which we did this year toronto two weeks ago then we go to new york and that's the year good for you my man all right you know we've known each other for a minute. I've been wanting to get you on the podcast more from the entrepreneurial story because there's so many kids up in my DM about events businesses. I I still believe event businesses are like some of the best things kids can be building. A lot of kids do get into it because a lot of people fuck up because they're doing it just to party. Never start a business because you want to fuck around. Just (laughs) go fuck around and pay for it. (laughs) Because those things go out of business. A a hundred thousand percent. (laughs) But um, when you hit me up, not too long ago about what you were thinking. I've been looking, see, I love this NFT winter because this is where operators really shine. I always think about 2001, two, three, four of the internet because that's when Flickr was built, which was really the precursor to Instagram, dig.com, you know, Reddit. Like I, I was really in the mix in 02 to, yeah, all the blogging, which really started the whole content era, mm-hmm. MySpace, Friendster before that, like all of it, all the good shit happened that we all trade on now. New brands, but the concepts were built on the internet post the crash of the internet stocks. Mm -hmm. I think the concepts that everyone's gonna play on, on the blockchain, people still don't even realize that there's a blockchain which is different than the internet, that the NFT infrastructure, that might not even be called NFTs, just like we don't call the internet the web anymore, but that's what we used to call it. We might change the name, but the technology's real, and I believe all the real building starts now. That 100%. in 23, 24, 25, the things that are built will be what really dominates in 29, 30, 31. 
And so I'm watching very carefully because I can't just keep saying, well, it's me and V friends. I need other examples. And I believe what, what you've got cooked up is going to be replicated. I even got into the events business my damn self with VCon because of it. Mm-hmm. And so would love to talk to you about what you've got brewing to give people the preview. And for everyone who's listening, this is why I love what I do. Uh, it's what I love about how you guys roll from afar. I watch you give love to other things. What, what you're about to hear, a lot of you follow me so you know I came from NFT Project that gave you access to event. This is one of the most significant, culturally relevant event businesses in the world, bringing NFT utility back into it, and I think it will be replicated by all of their contemporaries. The, I know there's the big country music festival versions. There's you know Coachella's and Bonders, all this stuff. So what are you what are you all doing? So, so I've seen some festivals have put out some NFTs here and there yep. and whatnot and to your point about like the bear market or whatever, we've been watching and playing and investigating and investing in NFTs since they came out, right? Yep. With the whole gold rush of NFTs. Yep. Yep. But we didn't want to be perceived as rushing in to That's just, right. just doing cash it grab and just yep. when we weren't even ready. So we buckled down and really worked on what it is we're doing. But essentially what we're doing is, you guys just heard all the markets we're in. We're, we're creating a lifetime pass. And our NFT is called Loud Punks. <laughs> um, punk, loud punks, loud punks is a character of ours already. It's at all of our festivals, inflated, forty feet in the air. All of our videos, our ticket packages. Always has, was called loud punk. Yeah, loud punks. P U N X. Always. Yeah. Pre crypto punk Pre- hype of two hundred twenty. We actually added the loud in front of punks because we realized, oh, people are gonna think <laughs> we're like copying. <laughs> Uh, That's beautiful. It was originally Obviously, just the OGs punks. know. Yep. Yeah, but um, like we had punk stage. Yep. All, so now, I'm aware. I'm just doing it for yeah. the people listening at home. So <laughs> now, so now it's that. it's called Loud Punks, but basically it's a connection, a collection of NFTs, a PFP project, yep. essentially all of which are unique, and every single one gets you lifetime access to any Rolling Loud. For period. Life, period. Then the, on top of that, there will be certain trait trait based utility. Where, that will come along. Which your collection yep. is all about that. Yes. So we have elements of that trait based utility where, you know, certain are certain ones are gonna give you VIP and certain ones are gonna give you access yep. to our 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 nightclub that's at the festival. Do people <laughs> is that a available info or you're gonna be announcing that in the coming weeks? The utility aspect. The utility is like out there. We okay. haven't told like So where I'm do being, people like this one knowing my audience is gonna have some attention, so where should people go if they wanna dig deeper? I'd say follow the Twitter, at LoudPunksNFT, and join the Discord. And one more time on, on how at, you sp- mm-hmm. L-O-U-D-P-U-N-X-N-F-T. Got you. Um, also, what do you, you should mo- follow Rolling Loud, too, just throwing that That's out there. That's probably right. <laughs> um, what, uh, what excites you most about the project? The idea that, it's two things, right? The idea that a fan could make this one investment with us and go to as many shows as they want and then and then yeah. flip it yeah. and make a profit so save money on the front end of like oh i know i want to go to three festivals next year or i know i want to go to three festivals over the next two years right or six festivals or whatever it is or i'm 17 right now making some paper flipping or doing that thing but i i know i'm going to do this for seven ten years mm-hmm. i mean that's the 16 17 18 year old that's about this life that's listening they really mm-hmm. you know the 29 year old that's like man i'm gonna start settling down not sure how many i'm gonna go to they don't realize that you actually re-up in your late 30s you're like fuck it i don't want to give up on my youth but you'll learn that soon but you know it's really interesting where people are in their life cycle and interest graph Definitely. and location right yeah. like if you're in new york Right, you got New York, you got Toronto, you got Miami. That's easy on that. Exactly. You know, that's three right there. Yeah. And if you got a little paper, then you can go to LA. Then you can go to Europe in the summer. Like it gets real interesting real fast. Exactly. And then the so that, that that's one. That's yep. one. And then the second thing is Rolling Loud has always been about building community and representing different like subgenres of communities. Right. So this idea that we could build this community of our most core fans as well as just you know, Celebrate. bringing in the, the NFT community yeah, as of well. Course. Because um, that was a strength of yours, right? There were so many micro subcultures of hip hop, if you're like really in it, that you really wouldn't understand. You referenced it earlier. Mm-hmm. You kind of brought a lot of the most contemporary ones that you all be- felt were coming up. And mm-hmm. then some of the artists started creating some of these gen- subgenres. You just see the NFT community that loves this kind of music just being another subgenre of the overall genre. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think. 
you're all about culture i'm the same way yep. like culture drives life. everything like everything there is nothing in, else yeah everything in life is culture based we are we, what do you what do all i'm sorry to interrupt what do you all think religion is culture a hundred percent people get it twisted because it's mature but it's all the same shit yeah. what the fuck do you think fans are mm -hmm. the jets are a subculture mm -hmm. i hate buffalo <laughs> like fucking hate <laughs> On some like, let's go to war shit. I understand why countries go to war. I oh, hate Josh man. Allen. On the record. Wait, do the Jets hate the Dolphins too? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. And that's my business partner. I and I hate him. That. I tell him all the time. I'm like, I hate that. you. Fuck you, Steve I was Ross. mad. I was mad they won this weekend. When when the Ravens were up 35-14, I was like, let's fucking go. They're my they're in my division. I don't fuck with people in my division. Yeah, that's funny. Um, Damn, what was I saying though? I can't believe I just did a whole I hate rant and didn't me, me mention the Patriots. We mentioned <laughs> the Bills and the Dolphins. Boy, have the seasons changed after 20 years. That's the best diss of all, fucking Boston. You're not even relevant enough to hate right now. That's how much you're fucked up. <laughs> just eliminating oh fans God. by the second. <laughs> Let nah, me tell they, you something, I Chicago. They, I think they, res kidding. they respect you for it because they're like, yo, he's, he's a real... And I, by the way, I did posted something the other day about this guy who rolled up at me who was a Patriots fan and all the Pat fans in the comments are like, yo, fuck that guy. He's not a like, I respect... Diehard fans are everything to me. Yeah. Like, I'm a diehard, so even though I might dislike the team that someone's a diehard of, if you're a true diehard, what I don't like is bandwagon. Yeah. I don't see as many fucking Patriot jerseys running around New York as I did four years ago. Where the fuck are you, bandwagons? Oh, weird, you're wearing off. a Bills jersey. Oh, weird, you've got a Ram spot. Where are all the fucking Cavalier jerseys at? Like, I hate like, that. Like, you know, I go to uh, Miami Heat games all season and I pay to sit courtside and it's not that expensive during the season because it's well, not Miami's in Miami's a tricky Boom, town. the playoffs come. Yeah. Everybody, it's like, oh, sorry, the tickets you usually buy, like my, Khaled my, bought them. I'm my, like, Khaled didn't, sorry, I love you, Khaled. Khaled didn't go to one game all regular season. What Matt, the hell, man? Miami's a tricky sports town. Miami fan base is not, like, Miami's a tough play, place to play for. There's just too much other shit going on. Like, Miami's also got a lot of transplants. Like, you go to a Jets Dolphins game, half the stadium Jet fans. So, Miami's got a, especially now, even yeah, more New York. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Uh, more New Yorkers live down there. So, I like, would Miami's, like to see that. I need to see a Jets game at, at Hard Rock Stadium. I've gone many times. But this year, though. like This year, it's late. I think it's in December. I mean, I'm worried about Miami. Miami looks real good. All right, before I got to go and we're talking about fucking sports. Let's finish this up. So those are two things that really stand out. What? Um. Yeah, just the thought of like, we're going to have loud, loud punks lounges at the at ho soon all the shows, but at first select shows. And, you know, it's just this idea that like people that are investing in something together, these NFTs yeah. can then meet each other in 100%. real life, link this is, up it, this is all, it all over the world. This is what it is. You know, I just think that's going to be incredible. Um, we're going to get you back in Q1 of next year. We'll find out how the project's going. We'll find out how the business is going because I don't like that we ran out of time and I've got to run. And I think we got a lot more to cover. I want you to really teach the kids of the process a little bit. And I think it'll be fun to really tap into the learnings of a project you're, in my opinion, why this is important is one of the most significant projects in real life events that's adding the killer app, which is the lifetime pass. Mm -hmm. To me, this is the most, one of the most interesting. Like I, I the, think... the lifetime pass against something that's already amazing. Me doing a three year pass for VCon, nobody ever went to VCon. There is no fucking VCon. Like nobody knew if I could do it well or not or what have you. Rolling loud is fucking rolling loud. It's already known. Everyone knows what the fuck it is. And so I think the educated. Even the people that are, hard, like I think about the people that are hardcore rolling loud, who are like, yo, fuck NFTs. Mm -hmm. It's a scam, they're buying this. Yeah, And exactly. that's because the utility's the punchline. Yep, exactly. If this was a QR code or a piece of fucking paper or a booklet or a fucking app, they'd buy it. Mm -hmm. The fact that it just happens to be an NFT, like they're, it's gonna be irrelevant. It's the lifetime pass, period. And like, that was by, back in the day, everyone's like, Gary, who's gonna buy wine on the internet back in 96 when you, all of you were kids? Everyone's like, this is so stupid. Why are you doing this? They're like, who's gonna buy wine on the internet when you can go to the store and buy it? And my answer was everyone. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna buy NFTs? Everyone, because it's a utility. Exactly. It's a better ledger because it's also an asset. If it was just an app with a QR code, when I got tired of rolling loud, and let's say I just stop liking that kind of music, it happens, random ass shit, or I'm broke, or or I'm got super wealthy and I don't fucking wanna do shit like that anymore. Who the fuck knows why? Or I'm settling down, or I moved somewhere in the middle of fucking nowhere and I don't wanna travel. The fact that it's an asset, if it's a QR code, 
it's expiring on you. Right. If it's an NFT, you're selling it. Yep. When are people gonna understand this shit? The fuck's the matter with you all? <laughs> That's the best part is you, when you're done with it, you can flip it. Hey, you could buy five of them. Keep one for yourself. Flip the other four. You know? It's like, I don't care. I, You see what people do in these other communities. Yeah, capitalism is good. You're an entrepreneur. It is what it is. Yeah. So anyway. T, Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Always, good luck. Thank you. Everybody, please check it out. I think this is something that you got to look at this because even if you don't fuck with this music, you're like fucking mumble rap. I don't fuck with this shit. Cool. You know? Cool. Pay attention to it because when your shit comes up, the country one, or the fucking EDM one, or the whatever, or like something else, horse racing, or dinner series, or the fuck, it's all coming. The real shit that does a does it big globally is gonna add these lifetime killer app NFTs, and they're gonna really matter. This is the first one I'm excited about to really watch how it plays out. Um, not because I love T, because, because I love a lot of people, because it's the first one of a significant one that went to the jugular, the lifetime pass. So it's gonna be interesting to watch. We'll all learn a lot from it. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. And we'll talk Appreciate soon. Appreciate you. At Loud Punks NFT, at Rolling Loud. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.